Billy T. Detroit Radio. News, sports, entertainment, and a little foolishness. What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your man, Billy T., and we are back. And this is the Billy T. Detroit Radio Podcast, show number 88. And special guest in the studio, Mr. Ari Spears. Hey, what's happening, brother? And your partner, Mr. Steinberg. Andy Steinberg. Andy Steinberg. Why is that name familiar? Uh, Because he's probably your accountant (laughs) or your lawyer. (laughs) Ari Spears, listen, man, uh, I've been watching you since Mad TV. Yes, sir. Which was incredible. I loved Mad TV. Thank you, brother. I don't know why it went away, but... Uh, you know, just time. It, it, it just was time. Ran you know? its course. Yeah, it ran. I mean, you know, the only big bully on the block is uh, Saturday Night Live. That's so, it. you know, that's it. That's but, the, but, the Godfather. But for us to have that kind of run 14 years, um, it, you know. That it, ran it, for 14. It, you were 14, there for how long? Eight. Uh, my favorite, one of my favorite uh, <laughs> things you did on there was Bobby and Whitney. Oh, that was one oh of my, my, my favorite as well. That was classic. Yeah, me, me and De- I had a good time. Deborah, Deborah Wilson, my Y'all girl. Y'all were fooling yeah, on we, it. We, Bobby, Bobby, yeah. Bobby. <laughs> yeah, we got to we got to go hard in the paint on that one. <laughs> y'all nailed yeah, it, man. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, brother. So what? 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 How did y'all come up with that? that how did these skits come about? Uh, just, some of them write themselves, you know, like that one. But, but yeah, yeah, they just put it out there. We. Took what we knew we, what we had to take and and, and made the obvious. Uh-huh. Um, I, and you know some of it is just you know uh, great writer. We just had great writers, man. Yeah, you know people that really knew what they were doing and knew how to do edgy stuff and and not afraid to take it there and and smart and all of that good stuff. And that's what I liked about Mad TV because there was a point when, uh, in my opinion, you guys overshadowed Saturday Night Live. Right. Uh, you know, they've had their ups and downs. Yeah. You know, great seasons and okay seasons. Yeah. But you guys came so hard, it was like, oh, man. Yeah. Um, you know, th- thank you. And we have we had heard that uh, a lot. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Uh, at, you know, so it's a, it's a great compliment. But, uh, again, it would have been nice to completely overthrow uh overthrow the bully <laughs> yeah uh but you know it is what it is you know that 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 show is an entity it is man. you know and and to, and to have that kind of history and longevity i mean look at all the stars that came that from that from that um but you guys too i mean uh uh the lady who did miss swan what's her name uh alex bornstein who's who's the Mother lowest family lowest guy, family guy. Yeah, yeah key and pill uh, were they on there? Yeah, they that were. was on them, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they went on to do their thing. Look at yeah, them. Yeah, so yeah, kudos to that. Yeah, you guys had so much fun there now. But you say you started in comedy at what age? 14. 14? How do you yeah. guys start at 14? Uh, well, when you say you guys. I know, it's a lot of guys that start at a very no, young age. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. That's Didn't why Eddie I say you guys. Didn't Eddie start real young? Eddie, uh, Dave Chappelle, D- Chappelle, and myself. Yeah. Uh, uh, Chris Rock. Uh, Didn't he start pretty young? 18, 19? No, something? I think he's, well, I think he started at, at like 19. Okay. okay. Yeah, but, but I, the only guys I know of that started at 14 was Murphy, uh, Chappelle, and myself. Now, how do you get in to do that at 14 years old? Will you just sneak in the club and say, I want to do it? Well, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know about back then, because, uh, you know, that era, the times might have been a little bit looser. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but I know my mother had to accompany me to oh, the clubs. okay. Yeah, and I came in with, with you know, and I came up through the New York, New, York, New Jersey area with my man Bill Bellamy. Okay. So, uh, you know, yeah, back in the day, you know, in Long Island and Newark and, you know, certain parts of New York, you know, uh, my mother took me to the clubs and would, you know, we'd be in the green room or whatever the green room was back there. And I, I had to stay away from the alcohol and the of fun. Of course, of course. And then when it was time for me to perform, do my thing. And when, as soon as I was done, jet up out of there. Okay. So I didn't start getting into the dirty part of it. Until uh, a little bit, till you got rid of mom. <laughs> yeah, until I, yeah, until I got rid of mom. Yeah. All right, mom, I can go by myself now. Yeah, I remember uh, one, there was a, one of the most popular clubs Back in the day, uh, in Jersey, was a club called the Peppermint Lounge in East Orange, and that was the stomping ground for all the black comics uh-huh. back then. That came up again: Bellamy, uh, Terry Hodges, Steve Harvey. A lot of them cats went through there, uh, and I remember back when they was auditioning for people for, in Living Color, and I remember my mother couldn't take me to the audition. So Ooh. this chick who was, would come to the clubs regularly and see me. Her name was China. Mm-hmm. And, you know, again, I'm a kid. I'm in my teens. She's in her, like, mid-20s. But she knew my mother real well, so she agreed to pick me up and take me to the audition. Long story short, 
China always was into me, and I always was into China. So I ended up spending the night at her house, Uh-oh. unbeknownst to my mother, and uh-huh. got the whooping of my life the next day. <laughs> but the crazy thing is I was so scared and intimidated, I, I didn't know what to do. Right. Like, like she came to the bed in a teddy on, and I just froze. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, they, it's like that, man. Yeah, man. You just a kid. You didn't I know. I was a kid, but I, I made up for it when they did the first Def Jam tour, and we was in Atlantic City, <laughs> and I spent the night at one of uh, Trump's establishments and uh, got my first good piece uh, in my teens. Man. Okay, All yeah, right. I knew what to do then. Yeah. Uh, speaking of your boy Trump, oh, any thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> I just throw that out there. You guys can. <laughs> hey, man, did he say it? Uh, what, what did you... he say it? Which part? The word. Oh, which, which, uh, the N uh, word? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you know, listen, man, I, I can't stand the man, you know? Uh, and and uh, I go hard in the paint, which is, I think, why my Twitter account is suspended right now. Uh-oh. Because uh, I can't stand um, black Trump supporters. Yes. These, these niggas in the cool There's something wrong with them. It's, it's killing me. Yeah. You know, Candace Owen, oh. CJ Pearson, Paris Denard... Sheriff Clark, Diamond oh, and he Silk. He needs to go sit down somewhere. AKA, Diamond and Silk is a AKA, joke. AKA, mm-hmm, and show Liz. <laughs> um, all these niggas, man. Pastor Mark Burns. I, I, I just don't understand. Like, and when you look at Candace Owens, they, they, and they all take the same stance, which is to bash the left and constantly say how we black people who are Democratic supporters are slaves to the plantation. Yeah, I hate that. As opposed to the right as whom? Right. Like the right exactly. never owned slaves. Exactly. They ain't never had crooked cops or fucked up people in the judicial system to run it. Like they are just exempt from treating niggas just as bad. Yeah. Listen, I'm not saying the left is good. The left and the right stink. But to try to downplay one racism over another, it's like one is regular racism and the other is what? Diet? Get the <laughs> fuck out of here, man. <laughs> they all bad. And then when they say that, oh, you're on the plantation, okay, well, where am I going to go if I, other than that? Right, they act you know like, but, but again, they acting like the right is it, the place to be. a history of, 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 of a clean slate. Right. And, and again, miss me with that bullshit about, well, and this, this is predominantly what the white folks say because listen one thing i've learned through twitter is these white folks will defend these mascots these cool mascots yes, and yes. they go oh god forbid anyone think differently right it's like we're not that fucking naive we're not that shallow of a people that we are bashing you for thinking differently we are bashing you for not explaining thoroughly what is the difference mm-hmm. like to act like to act like there is no difference is ridiculous exactly it's like get the fuck the right opposed everything obama tried to do they fought that man tooth and nail and why was that because he wasn't black the fuck out of <laughs> here man them niggas are killing me and, man and now of course he's trying to uh, erase everything that obama did and again, even it, it, even stuff that's good for everybody listen well, most, listen, you know, listen listen when when here's why we hate trump cuz again i don't want you know, if people go, people, it ain't got nothing to do with your thought. It's the obvious. Mm-hmm. You try, this man is trying to destroy the legacy of the first and only black president we've ever had. That in and of itself is enough. Right. But then there's the Central Park Five, the racial, the racial housing discrimination lawsuits. Mm-hmm. It just, the, the shithole countries and nations, people yep. of color, yeah. kids in cages, All Mexicans, your mur- murders and rapists, banned Muslims. Like, how much fucking evidence do we need before we call... A spade, a spade, or if it walk like a duck, talk like it's a motherfucking duck. <laughs> it's a duck. Like, we're like, come on, man. These, these you, you niggas in the coon camp, y- y'all are killing up. me. Y'all are killing me. Yeah. And 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 you know, Andy and I talk about this almost religiously on our pa- on our podcast. But again, stop this goofy shit with asking what did Obama do for us? Yeah. First of all, Obama wasn't the president of black people; he was the president of all people. But if if you but we can't negate. The association, yes, first black president, black people, our history in this country. So you do have some sort of expectation. Right. Here's how he met it. His presidency. That's it. If he didn't do shit else. Just him being in that position was was monumental. Listen. It really I, was. I can look my son in the face and go, you don't have to just be a rapper or an athlete. You could be the most powerful man in the most powerful position in the world. I can look my daughter in the face and go... You can be first lady and maybe now at some point president. 
So between that, he's allowed you to go to your great grandmother and your grandmother and grandfather and go, thank you for the 60s. Yep. Aretha Franklin, God rest her soul. This is how full circle she came. I saw the footage, black and white footage of her singing at Dr. King's funeral. Mm. She also sang at Obama's inauguration. Right. Do you see the span in which historically she's been? Huge. Obama represents that legacy. All of that. So the fact that that's our legacy, he's done enough for black people. This is not, this is a baton race. Right. He took the baton as far as he could for the first. Now it's up to the next nigga to take it from there and keep it going yeah. and going and going. To put all that weight on the first black man's shoulders it's, it's a lot. is impossible. Yeah. Jackie Robinson wasn't supposed to change everything. He just had to break the door but down. But he was the first. Right. Now look, now now the league is pretty much black and Dominican, which is really still black and black. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right, So this right. shit takes time. It takes time. For all you niggas, that, what, what did he do? For, uh, fuck out of here. Miss me with that. Obama was our Black Panther. You know what I'm saying? It was a movement. Yeah. It wasn't just a movie. So come on, man. And Keep I, it in perspective. I, I agree with that. So, sometimes imagery is, is everything. And just the image the of that image. beautiful black family Let me tell you, in that position. Let me tell you. the image is, is, is un, you, you can't touch that. The image that puts it in perspective is I remember I saw it on YouTube and I loved it. It almost you know made my tear ducts get moist. As uh, the old black woman, she's like, I think in her 90s, Mm -hmm. she's wearing a blue outfit. She comes into the White House and she goes, oh, my God, a black president. Oh, yeah. And then she sees Michelle and goes, a black first lady. Yeah. And she starts dancing. Dancing, And they danced with her. That's what Obama did for us. That's it. Uplifting. That's, it's what, uplifting. What the fuck you want to you know? put on a cape, nigga, and be super, nigga? And also, <laughs> it showed you, hey, you can be intelligent. Like you said, you ain't got to be mumbling. Uh, you can speak here's, here's, with intelligence. Here's, it's okay. Here's what I'm going to say about Trump. And this is why, as much as I loathe him, mm-hmm. I also love him. His stupidity and his chaos that he is causing and how he's fucking everything up adds to Obama's legacy. Yes. Yes. Because if Obama was in there and he stunk or he was the black version of Bush, you know, see, we you told see? you. That's why. We, right. Yep. So because he wasn't that and because he was better than that, scandal free, scandal free, no pose, prostitutes. And that, his <laughs> right. biggest crime was wearing a beige suit and, so, and mom jeans and mom jeans. <laughs> so you look at what Trump is doing and you're going that even enriches. Yeah. His Our legacy. legacy. Yeah. To say that we got the first nigga who not only came in there and did the job, but did it great. Was he with perfect? Class. No. No but one he is. did it and he did it great and he did it with dignity. I'm I'm a morph into my Paul Mooney shit. Uh oh. That brother is good. I don't <laughs> care what you niggas say. All of you niggas talking that silly shit. What did Obama do for us? Nigga, what did you do for yourself? Get Ooh. yourself off that couch, nigga. Put that weed down and clean them little nigglet babies. You got all them nigglet babies. Running around the house, diapers heavy as a fat bitch on Thanksgiving. Clean them little nigglets. Get a job, nigga. I don't hear that shit. What did Obama do for this? <laughs> them white folks, them white folks was up in arms when that nigga put on that suit. This nigga in a beige suit. Beige. It's light colored. It's so close to white. Who does this nigga think he is? That nigga needs to go put on some red. Be the Steve Harvey and Bernie Mac of politics. You know niggas like them loud colors. Orange suits and shoes. You niggas ain't even Halloween. You niggas dress like pumpkins. It's, it's crazy, nigga. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of my favorite, dude. Oh, man. That's one of my you favorite. You got him too, man. You do great impressions, man. Thank uh, you, brother. But that's, that's that one, one of my... I haven't heard you do that one. Well, I, you know, oh. it, 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 I, I love it just because the challenge of having to say Paul shit. Right. It ain't just the impression. Exactly. It's, Saying Paul shit that Paul would say. <laughs> you got him too. Thank you, man. <laughs> you know you like the orange shoes with shoes and shoes and shoes. And shoes. And just, it's ridiculous. I saw a bitch. <laughs> I saw a black bitch last night in an all red outfit from scalp to cuticle. Bitch looked like a Tabasco bottle. <laughs> I said, bitch, why? Why do you look like that? She said, because I'm spicy, nigga. <laughs> Yeah, I love it, man. So is this the kind of stuff you do on your podcast? Yes, the Spears and Steinberg podcast, uh, available on iTunes, or you could go to Spearsberg.com, that's Spears, B-E-R-G.com, or my name, AriesSpears.com, to get get access to it for your Samsung, your Galaxy, or your Android smartphone. But yeah, primarily iTunes and download it for free.
Is it is it more fun or do you get serious too? You got a little bit of everything. And, in hold on, but I'm, I'm gonna answer that question again. Free and this, I got to do Paul on this one. And let's stop this notion that niggas love free. <laughs> this 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 rumor that oh niggas love free <clears throat> black people love free everybody loves free nigga especially white people they got us to work for free Woo, look they out. stole us for free white folks love free more than niggas that's like saying niggas only eat watermelon and chicken white people eat that shit too <laughs> I seen a white man the other day pour watermelon juice on his chicken <laughs> nigga had chicken and watermelon oh. at the same time Eat your heart out, niggas. <laughs> but yes, your question again. That free shit just made me think of Paul. Because I've always hated funny. when white people say, right. black people love free. Who the fuck don't Does love it? free? Everybody loves free. Free's like pussy, nigga. Everybody enjoys it. Right. Now, let's bring your partner in here. Yeah. Uh, Andy? <laughs> yes. Steinberg? Yes. All right. Now, how did you hook up with this guy? What's your relationship here? What's this all about? It was uh, it was pretty simple. I met him at uh, Stand Up Live in Phoenix. Over a period of a few years, he came in. And what's funny is Aries gets a reputation in the comedy community is that he's kind of hard and he's standoffish and he's aloof. But Aries is just into his work. And I, I'm older, so when he was like that, I was like, he's into his work. And just built a relationship by just being honest and not taking shit personal like most people do and, right, and, right. And, and I found out Andy's really good with numbers Ah, so. is that right <laughs> you gotta have a white man on your team that's good with numbers <laughs> boy you a mess now are you a stand up also or? I'm a stand up okay alright and what would we know you from uh, working with Aries okay <laughs> that's good enough right there right <laughs> and uh, so the podcast is, is kicking and you guys are are you touring together or yeah yeah he's uh, he, he's my feature comic and uh yeah, we go on the road every week mm-hmm. and do the podcast. Okay, what do you do? What do you do? You now when you were doing Mad TV, were you off the road for a while or? Oh yeah, uh, it, it, it's almost like a uh, like an NBA season. You know, okay. you, you would do the show for about six months, and then when you're off, that's your road time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it would be both basically. So you never really got too far away from stand up. Never, never. Uh, this this is the bread and butter. You know? Okay, um, and I'm still trying to reach that. Uh, Dave Chappelle esque, the late great Patrice O'Neill esque level of of ferociousness. Uh-huh. Um, so un- until I get there, uh, I can't stop this. Okay, because I, I really want to leave my foot in the door. And I I think I think too often uh, I feel kind of slighted and and disrespected in by the way? comedy game because I I don't think people I, I know the hardcore diehard fans know me mm-hmm. and give me that love and respect. Mm-hmm. But the industry, um, you know, and I don't, I don't want this to come off egotistical or vain, but because I'm certainly not approaching it from that way, it's more or less I'd like to be uh, recognized for what I'm trying to do. Okay. And when I walk into <clears throat> some of these improvs and comedy clubs and I don't see my picture on the wall, mm. and, 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 and I feel slighted. And, and, and sometimes in the comedy community, I don't hear my name thrown around enough. And again, I know that might come off as me sticking my chest out and on some ego shit, but it really isn't. I just, I just, you know, no, any artist that tells you they don't want to be recognized for what they do is lying they to lying. you. They're lying, exactly. You know, that's, that's part of why we're in it. Yeah. You know, we're in it because we have love for the game, but you, you have a voice and you yeah. want people to hear that voice and you feel like you have something to add to the game, so you want people to, you know, hear that and respond to it and, and have a back and forth. So, um and you ain't new to the game. You've been been here, man. Yeah, You've been doing this for a minute. I, I, yeah, I've been, you know? I've, been, I've been doing it for, for, for 29 years. 29 years. That's and, a- and, and something that we're going to discuss on our podcast this weekend, you know, I, and I got to say, what really pisses me off sometimes, like last night I had a brother come up to me, a young comedian, and ask me for stage time. He said, mm-hmm. hey, man, can I do a five-minute guest spot? And I told him no. Mm-hmm. And let me be specific here. I'm on this camera, right? Yep. Okay. Because I'm really talking about, because I only get this from black comedians. To you young niggas in the game, uh, stop acting so fucking devastated when I tell you no. Mm -mm. Because part of, because what kills me is the fact that you have an ego. Uh, Because if you anticipated a no, then there's nothing to be mad about. If you know going into something, look, this nigga don't know me, I don't know him. He could say no. He could say no. So if you anticipate a no, <clears throat> there's no reason to be upset. Right. Part of that is your ego why you're upset. And I'm not saying no to you 
for any other reason other than the fact that I don't know you. And if you are not funny and you get on that stage, then you change the energy of my show. If you get on that stage and you just cussing to be cussing as a crutch, as a lot of black comics do, you know, they, they don't really have a good skill set. So they're loud and they mm. cuss for effect. Based on your skill set, if your skill set isn't there, then you change the dynamics of my show, which is why I have a feature, someone mm-hmm. that I know and trust and who I work with. So you niggas don't have enough credits to be egotistical. You, you, your local comics, you haven't done anything outside of your region. You haven't performed in a different country or continent. You don't know what it's like to deal with different cultures that have nothing to do with American, which is part of a skill set to know how to adapt to that. You haven't been on television. You haven't done stand up on a special. You haven't been in a movie. You, why, why, how can you have an ego? And, and then on top of that, again, I'm not sitting here saying that after I tell you no, well, you must watch and learn from me. Because again, I'm trying to learn and be and grow, th- grow. But for you to then turn around because you're mad and bounce, mm. it's like, nah, nigga, mm. take a seat, yeah. watch. You learn. might pick something up. You might up. learn something. So between you being devastated for a no that you didn't anticipate and you bouncing, that shows me where your ego is. Mm-hmm. You think your shit don't stink. I'm not saying you're not funny, but I don't know that you are. Well, you so, know, so why would I say yes to you and I don't know you? Exactly. And I've been around comedy clubs and I've seen the guys wait and wait and wait and get to get their shot on stage to do five minutes at a, right. at a local stand, uh, open right. mic even. Right. So it's not easy. Everybody has to... Pay, yeah, pay they pay they dues yeah. as they say. Yeah, you know. Listen, I, I've I've you know, ten, fifteen, even twenty years into this. Mm-hmm. Fuck it, I'll go to full twenty nine. I'll push all my chips to the center of the table. People know who I player, am. Huh? <laughs> People know who I am. I, I got a body of work. Yes, you do. But we have to keep it in perspective. Mm-hmm. If I'm at the comedy club on a Monday night in L.A., mm-hmm. where you know. Or the Laugh Factory or the Comedy Store where they have a list of the comics going up for the night. And I'm about to hit the stage. And Eddie Murphy walk in. Kevin Hart walks in. Dave Chappelle walks in. Adam Sandler walks in. I want to do some time. Mm-hmm. Guess who's getting bumped? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm a veteran. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm, I'm, I'm a staple in this motherfucker. Uh-huh. But it's perspective. Right. These are the guys that have paid their dues. Before me, or like Kevin, we kind of in the same lane as far as timing, but, but clearly he's on another level. He's a Kevin he's, Hart now. Yeah, he's Kevin Hart. So there's, yeah. as much as I might want to bite my bottom lip, it'd be what it be. Yeah. Yeah. So. And uh, so these are these are guys you respect in the game, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else that you, do you see any young guys coming up that you like? Uh, like and I got another question, follow-up question. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm really not... I just don't, I'm not in, I, I'm really not watching okay. like that. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm, yeah. The guys I like are the guys I'm watching. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? With, I'm with. Yeah. Um, but and, not, and, may, and maybe that's a detriment to me. Maybe mm, I should. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Just to well, see. But you know, you're working and you're doing your thing. They yeah. have to be in your presence for you to see them. Uh, but what about these Instagram comedians? They do these little skits they're not, and bits. They're not comedians. Don't well, use that word. Okay. I was going to say, yeah. can that translate? Because I don't know if these guys can get on stage and do five minutes. And most of them can't. They don't know if they can get up on stage and do five minutes. Yeah, exactly. I, listen, I applaud, they haven't done it. I applaud, look, comedy, great comedy is great comedy. Mm-hmm. So back when it was on, whether it's Vine, whether mm-hmm. you do some shit on YouTube, if it's six seconds, if it's two seconds, mm-hmm. a good joke is a good joke. Okay. And I applaud that. Mm-hmm. But don't make the mistake of thinking that that's, Stand up because it's not stand up. It's his own beast. And because you funny on a vine or a quick skit, that's different from standing on stage in front of live people, live people bearing your there's not your naked soul mm-hmm. and, and giving them a point of view that's not, you know, relying on other people or as an ensemble in a skit or a gag or a prop or anything like that. Um, but I applaud them. But but, yeah, that's a different, you know. It is an art form. Yes. It is an art yes. form. Uh, what about like uh, in this time we're in now and everybody's so sensitive. Uh, it's not censorship. I think that this where we're getting to is age we're, sensitivity. we're getting to a self-censorship uh, uh, time where uh, let me be careful about what I say. I don't want to offend. What do you guys think about well, that? I, I, I think in the, depending on where mm-hmm. you're at, mm-hmm. that makes sense because when you got, you know, 
jobs involved, mm-hmm. potential sponsorship, mm-hmm. money. Okay. I think you have to be mindful of that, which is something I'm trying to learn to be better at. But is uh, that good? If you're not, you're really trying to get a point across and you have to stop and think, okay, uh, well, Coca-Cola I, might pull out. Right. I say you in stand-up, in stand-up, you should be able to no holds bar. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, the one rule is if it's funny, it's money. So instead, if it's not funny, it's hate speech, okay. depending on what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, and stand up, you sh- this is the last medium of true self expression and free speech. Yeah. So that should be left alone. Uh, but anything else in terms of like when you're doing interviews, mm-hmm. you might be careful about what you say in an interview. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's different. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's something that I'm, I've had to learn the hard way. But on stage, you would you would you would say be free, be free, man. Be but you free. can't, Andy. You keep, they, they keep trying to censor comics, and the more you censor comics, the people have to understand that this we are the last people to get to say or make fun of the king. Yeah. So if you don't let us do this, you're going to end up in a society that you're not going to want to be in. This we are the ones that can call out everything that's wrong, and if you don't let us, if you don't let us open that door, just because you're sensitive, because you're you're catching some feelings from something that we're just trying to make a point. That's on you. You're gonna you're gonna an ultra sensitive society that no one's gonna be able to recover from. And you that's know, what it feels like we're heading to. Well, you know, it's almost like uh like prohibition. You know what I mean? You told everybody they couldn't drink, and so motherfuckers they, they drink. The, yeah, they, you know, because it's something. It's it's a, it's a high. It's, it's exactly it's, the it's, rush it, is doing what you're not supposed to do. Right, and 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 it, it makes you anything that makes people feel good. You mm-hmm. can't stop. Yeah. So it's like, and I I really believe. This sensitivity shit will finally bite itself in the ass at some point. Yeah. That's why I'm trying as hard as I can to stay true to it the whole way. So that way, when it does switch and you get all the motherfuckers who all of a sudden would never really that way, trying to be that way because it's the wave again, people could go, yeah, Aries was always that. So Mm -hmm. it ain't a front. Mm -hmm. And he ain't putting on a show. This nigga been that since day one. So that's his authenticity is in is in check. So I love a nigga even more. Yeah. Because he stayed true could, to the game. Right. Because when shit gets hot, everybody jumps on the bandwagon. Exactly. Motherfucker, you was just talking about homes and gardens two weeks ago. But now that being non-politically correct is the thing, you want to be Richard Pryor. Yeah. Nigga, that wasn't you <laughs> two years ago. ago. Come on, man. <laughs> right. And I think people will recognize that. They can and, sniff that out. Yeah. And that's the other thing is, is, is things go in trends, just like music and hip hop right. goes in trends. We've, we've had the mumble rap where they just talk about nothing. Right. And, uh, y- y- some conscious rappers come about. Right. Comedians like you mentioned Dave Chappelle, who's who's conscious and, and talks about issues other than uh, uh, random nonsense. Do you see people trying to get on that bandwagon? Well, it's funny that you mention rap because rap is a different thing. Mm-hmm. Like like music, as you just said, it evolves into whatever the next generation is. Right. Stand up is your own personal point of view. It's your own outlook. Right. So. You don't necessarily have to adapt to anything in terms of that. You're going to be who you are. Okay. And that's your voice. Okay. And people going to ride with you or not ride with you. One of my favorite lyrics uh, by Fat Joe, and I remember just, as you said, today is mumble rap. But not too long ago, the South dominated <laughs> hip-hop. Oh, my goodness. It started in the Bronx and Brooklyn. New York right. was king. The right. birthplace. Then it went to West, West Coast. Coast. Gangster. Yep. Then it went to the South. And a lot of East Coast Rappers and East Coast people was kind of bitter, like, damn, we ain't getting the shine right, right. we're used to. And Fat Joe did a song with a Southern rapper, and he said, uh, I don't know what y'all so mad at the South for. South for. Nigga, switch up your style. Nigga, switch to South Paul. <laughs> there you go. Got to switch so it up. with music, it's a little bit, if you want to kind of stay relevant. You got to follow the trend sometimes. Right, because, because. Unless you are strong enough to stand alone and do your thing. And that's very few. You Jay-Z. Know? Yeah. Jay-Z has he been Jay-Z change. no matter. He might do a song with a different style for that feature. But it ain't, feature, gonna, it ain't going to dictate But his, that ain't his whole right. album. Exactly. But again, that's Jay-Z. Yeah. And, and look, e- even all the e- East Coast rappers that have stayed true to who they are. Mm-hmm. Nas, Jada. You can go through them all. Mm-hmm. They're going to stay true, but the time has passed. Exactly. So their music ain't going to hit as much as ba ba de ba ba de ba ba de ba Because ba ba de ba is the happening. thing now. That's what, yeah. In comedy, you ain't got to be, I'm going to be squeaky clean and PC because that's the thing to be. 
No, that's comedy is about who you are. You're and doing if, a character if you're doing if yeah, you're not doing you. Yeah, yeah. And it's a front, so. Well, I enjoyed this time together. We, <laughs> man, I can imagine. I got to check out your podcast, man. Cause, yeah, uh, man. We 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 try to go hard in the paint. You know? Andy, I want to hear some more from you, man. What you are you sitting there just this, chilling? This, listen, don't don't, be don't, don't get it started. No, the the, the the quietest white boys be the scariest. This motherfucker got 47 bodies in his freezer. <laughs> don't let that shit fool you. Look no. at that beard, nigga. No. That, that, don't let this white man fool you, nigga. Ball gags, chains, whips. I'm the loud nigga. You come to my house, you ain't gonna think it. You gonna think, come to my house thinking there's a full blown orgy. Ain't no Rick James shit in my house. I'm fuck like a Mormon nigga. <laughs> a missionary fuck, nigga. I fuck bitches to gospel music. He's the, he's the strong conversationalist. You 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 started talking about Trump, and I was gonna get in on that, and we weren't gonna end this podcast because I I, so get, I get heated. Okay, I get heated when it comes to shit like that. So we just uh, I just sat. Well, it's good to have you guys. Uh, welcome to Detroit. I hope you have a good time you, while sir. you're here. How many? What, what? How many listeners you got on your, on your podcast? Uh, well, uh, we'll find out. I uh, oh, is I it new? It, uh, you know, it's, no, it's, it's it. always you oh, okay. know. I put it on Facebook. I put it on Sp- uh, Spreaker. I, I right. put it on the station website. I put it everywhere, and I'm just trying to build it. Well, on that it's, note, let me before I forget, uh, make sure y'all check me out. Well, shit, if if and when my Twitter comes back, um, <laughs> it might not. Airy Spears, but now why they gonna take you off of tr- Twitter? But they keep Trump on. What'd you do? What'd you say to get bounced off of Twitter? Because they're the most liberal one. They they like let I you don't go have more than Facebook. The complexion for the protection for the collection, brother. You know them white folks. Y'all got the protection, the complexion for the protection for the collection. That's actually a Paul Mooney <laughs> quote. You gotta give me some shack before you go. You know when I played in the league, I played a long time, but you know now I'm on TNT with Chuck and Ernie and <laughs> Kenny. And that's my new court now. I'm hard in the paint on that show. You know what's what I love about it is when you do the eyes. Yeah. You can't do Shaq without the eyes. Huh? Yeah, well, you have to. You have to. It's a little bit of an exaggeration. But right, right, right. You, 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 you get to just. Uh, but yeah, Facebook, Airy Spears. Instagram, Airy Spears Official. And uh, oh, Pandora, subscribe. It's free. Mm. I get paid. Uh, YouTube, Airy Spears. Hit subscribe and all that good shit. All right, there it is. Thanks a lot, guys. You Appreciate got it, baby. you, Aerie Spears. No doubt, no doubt. And Andy. See you, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, you can go to andycomedy.com. All my social media is at the top of my page. Uh, I like Instagram. That's the one that doesn't get anybody kicked off unless you do something really stupid. <laughs> really stupid, really stupid. Once again, uh, it's Billy T. Detroit Radio, podcast number 88 with Ari Spears and Andy Steinberg. Steinberg. I'm going to get it right. Thanks a lot, guys. We appreciate Laheim. you. <laughs> Billy T. Detroit Radio. The show's so dope, you might kill some brain cells. <laughs> I burned too many brain cells down to be worried about my brain cells now. Now, now, now. I burned too many brain cells down to be worried about a brain cell now. I burned too many brain cells down. Down, 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 down.